All right, guys, in this episode, I'm going to be showing you the magically delicious trim window. Pretty simple to use, and it kind of facilitates. It really gets into fine-tuning and facilitating your editing process with the shortcuts that you may already know with the roll and ripple. First of all, what you got to know is if you haven't watched the roll and ripple episode, I'd, I'd recommend going back and watching it just so you understand the concept of roll and ripple because that's what the trim window does is facilitates the roll and ripple edits. So first of all, what you got to know is how to land on edits because you're going to be editing specific edit points. So you're going to use your arrows up and down and you're going to be landing on the edits that you want to fix here. I'm going to land on these edits right here. So I'm arrow down moves to the right down the edits on the timeline and arrow up moves to the left. So I'm going to move down, land on this edit right here. And once you're landed on one of the edit points, you can simply hit the letter T and that brings up the trim window. Before I get into that, I, kind of, I want to clarify one other thing as well. I want to show this right here. Notice how you've got these two red lines between your, your edits there. Basically what that is doing is this is selecting this edit point for a roll edit because it's got, if you look really, really close, it's got the red selected to the left clip and the red selected to the right clip. So both edits are selected and it's ready to do a trim with a roll edit, which basically shrinks one out point while extending the end point of the other clip or vice versa. That's basically the way that works. Um, and actually, we can show you how to select it. The way you actually select those if you're outside the trim window, so you kind of understand what's happening once, once we get into the trim window, is right now I'm going to just click away from that to deselect it, and I'm going to go over and select the roll edit. So once you select the roll edit or hit N for roll edit, you can come out over and edit and just simply single click. And that selects an edit and prepares it for roll editing. And now if you come over here and select the ripple edit tool, watch this, and we're going to move this to the left, the clip to the, the left, and you click, notice it does this yellow line instead of a red line, which is selecting just the edit point on this individual clip. This roll edit is ready to edit just this clip and nothing else. And now if you do it to the right, same thing, it selects the edit to the right. That's how you select edit points. It is one with the roll edit tool, and then two with your ripple edit tool, either left and right and you see the difference between those. One other thing I want to discuss just uh, quickly before we get into the trim window, because you need to understand this to understand the trim window, is how you can use keyboard shortcuts to manipulate these edit points. If you've watched the earlier ripple roll episode, you'll notice that when you grab the roll tool, you can grab an edit here and you drag it to the right or to the left and it will trim one clip while, uh, it'll, it'll extend one clip while shrinking the other, like so. Now, if we want to trim this just with uh, keyboard shortcuts, what we're going to do is use the roll edit, select the clip, and then you can use option, arrow, left, or right. You hold down option and do arrows left or right, and it will trim that roll edit. It will roll edit that to the left or to the right, one frame at a time, every time you hold down. So I'm holding that option, hit arrow left, or arrow right, you can see what that's doing there. It's trimming it one way or the other. So that's how you can do it one frame at a time. We're going to get a good visual representation of this in a moment with a trim window. But like I said, important to understand the, the concept of this before we actually get into it. So now I'm going to choose my ripple tool, B, and we're going to select the, the edit to the left here. Say I want to extend that point there. You're going to hold down Option once again and use either arrows left or right. Left will trim just that single clip to the left while ripple editing and pulling all the other clips to the left. Or it will expand it by doing arrow right. And there you go. So that's the keyboard shortcut. And you can also do Option, Shift, left or right, and that will edit five frames at a time, left or right. And it will do the exact same thing on the roll edit. If you choose a roll edit and select Option, Shift, left and right, will do five frames at a time, or Option, arrow left or right, will just do one single frame at a time. A couple of shortcuts I kind of want to mention here too before we get into the trim window are the letters Q, U, and E. Uh, first of all, Q. Now this is without any edit points selected. I just want to show the difference between what happens when you have edit points selected and when you don't have edit points selected. The letter Q, first of all, is going to basically trim. It's like a quick trim key for everything from your playhead to the left. It's going to trim the rest of this clip right here. If I move this mouse over or, or my playhead over there, right here, and I hit Q, it's going to cut and ripple delete the rest of the footage here. It just cut that off and moved it over. Same if I move my playhead over here, it's going to cut and clean the rest of this footage right here. It's going to do a ripple delete, and that and the Q is the key to the left. There we go. It clears everything to the left. Now if you hit E, notice what E does. E is the opposite. It cleans everything to the right. It basically does a quick, it's like a quick ripple delete to the left, which is really convenient, or to the right, I mean, which is really convenient. So we hit W, and it cleans everything to the right. So Q will cut and clear everything to the right and do a ripple delete and fill the gap. W will clean everything to the right and do a ripple delete and fill the gap. There we go. 
Now the letter E is a shortcut that is uh, quite handy as well, but it only works when you have an edit point selected. Q and W do not have to have an edit point selected. If you have E, it needs to have an edit point selected. Watch when I hit E right now, nothing happens when I hit E. So if I go over and choose my roll tool, or just hit N for my roll tool, and I click here and select that edit point right there, what that's going to do, if you, when you hit E, it'll perform the roll edit for you to the playhead. So that's just like grabbing this and dragging it over to the playhead yourself. It basically, e, letter E will grab that edit point and roll edit it to the left. Now if you choose your ripple edit tool, B for shortcut, and select the clip to the left, it will ripple edit your playhead to that point. Or if you move your playhead over here, it will extend it to that point. It just extended ripple edited that to that point. If you select the clip to the right, you hit E, it just ripple deleted that footage there and pulled it to the left. I'm going to undo that. If you move it over and hit E, it's going to stretch that to that point there. And of course, a ripple edit leaves the adjacent clips alone. So the playhead is still there. This clip is just as long as it was before, but it just extended this much time onto that portion right there. So the letters Q, U, E are some important shortcuts in performing roll and ripple edits. Understanding all that, let's get into the trim window. So I'm going to land on that edit. I'm going to arrow up and down and land exactly on that edit. And now you hit the letter T for the shortcut to bring up your trim window. Now that's selected, let me expand the trim window here a little bit so you can kind of see what's going on. The trim window will bring up two windows. The left window, which is the ending frame of the previous clip, and the right frame, which is the right window, which is basically the end point of the next frame. So you have your previous frame, ending frame, and your end point of the next video clip here. And uh, we showed you kind of how to match when we did the ripple and roll, and I'm going to use the ripple to basically match the shot. Well, let's first of all go over the tools and we're going to be doing some matching. If you hover up over between the middle of these two clips, you notice it brings up a roll edit symbol. And all you have to do to roll edit is simply grab that and drag it left or right. And you'll see that it's doing a roll edit, edit here. It's changing both frames at the same time. Once you let go, you'll notice it adjusts down here. But it gives you this really nice visual representation so you can see if your shots are matching. These shots aren't matching. We're going to do that. And now if you move over to the left of the middle here, you'll notice it turns to a left arrow key here, the yellow left arrow key, which signifies that it's just editing the clip to the left. And I'm going to grab that and drag it left, and that's trimming it back to the left. And if I drag it forward, that's trimming it forward to the right. Once you let go, you'll notice it updates down here. So really nice. You move it over the middle, you got your roll edit, you move it to the left, you got your ripple edit to the left, you move it over here to the right, you got your ripple tool to the right. And now we can trim this thing. And when you let go, you'll notice it adjusts down here and does a ripple edit. Really nice and convenient. Now let's talk about selecting edit points as we showed down here. So now let's do an edit. Let's use our ripple edit tool. As mentioned before, the ripple edit is used to mainly do matching to get two clips, adjacent clips to match the timing. And then the roll edit is used to just decide where you want the edit to actually happen. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, I'm going to ripple edit this one back to where he's walking, still walking into a shot here. Let's, I'm, I'm going to move this over so it's left arrow, drag this to the left. And let's see, right when he kind of lands on his right foot, crosses over with his left, let's do that. Try to get the timing right there where he crosses over with his left. Right here, his left foot's barely stepping down. And I'm going to get this about on the same point with my clip to the right. So I'm going to go to the right, grab my ripple edit, pull that over, and there's his left coming down, and then he steps in with his right to his final spot there. So let's get where his left hits, right about there, and see if we matched. Now to play back and match this, all I have to do is hit Shift K, it goes back a couple seconds and plays, and plays through the edit. And that looks like it matches there pretty well. Like I said in an earlier episode, maybe I don't like where that edit happens. So I'm going to land on my edit again, hit T for my trim window, move between, and perform a roll edit. Say I want where he's just kind of exited out of the frame and I want that to match coming into the shot there. So he kind of comes in, enters a clean frame there. So now I use my roll edit, now that it's matched, to pull that back and decide where the, that I want the edit to start a little bit earlier. So now I'm going to hit Shift K, plays back the shot. Actually, let's, let's try this. I'm going to try it one more time. Just move it a little bit forward when it comes to a stop. Right, right about there. Let's try that and see what that looks like. Now it's coming to a stop here. And I like that too, so it just depends on what you like. And that is, that is basically what the trim window does. It's just a nice visual representation of what you're editing. It gives us nice kind of out frame and in frame here. But you can also use the same sort of shortcuts that I showed you the, at the beginning of this episode with the shift and uh, with the option and shift keys. First of all, to select edit points, you can use you don't even have to select your roll or ripple tools down here. You can just move over this window, 
move it into the roll position here. Right now I do have my edit already selected. Let me deselect this to show what happens. Hit T. And actually, once you hit T, it automatically selects a roll edit the first time you select it. Watch this. I'm going to move over to the left, click, and you'll notice down here it has selected the left out point of this clip. If you move over here and click on the right hand side, notice it has selected that left, or I mean that right hand uh, endpoint. And if you move to the middle and click, it selects both endpoints. And now you can either use these buttons here, or you can use the shortcuts. I pretty much never use these buttons because I pretty much always use the shortcuts here. If you hit negative one, it trims back one single frame at a time. Or as mentioned before, the shortcut is option, arrow left to trim backwards, option, arrow right to trim forwards one frame at a time. And here it's showing how many frames we're changing. We've gone negative eight frames back from, our, from where the original edit was until we leave the trim window. Now it's 10, 12 frames forward. And you can also do ripple editing here with the same functionality. You can hit just this one to the left or edit to the left is selected. Option, arrow left, trims that clip in. Arrow, or option, arrow right, trims that the uh, out point further out, stretches it out. Or let's do our roll edit. And you can do option, shift, arrow left, five frames at a time. Or option shift arrow right trims it forward five frames at a time and that is in essence the trim window kind of a neat quick feature that brings up a visual representation of what your edit is doing